You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, we'll make navigation buttons to switch between the main screens. We'll also make the buttons change color to indicate the active screen. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video, I am assuming that you have already completed the previous videos in this series. By the end of this section, you should be able to navigate between the different screens like you see I'm doing here. And the button for the screen that you are currently selected should change color and highlight like you see here. The way you'll do it is first to uh, create these buttons. These are under basic controls push button. And for each push button, uh, you'll set it rather than to a variable like we did in the quick start, you'll set the command type to execute commands and you choose commands on release. And you'll create a command here that goes to uh, open a screen. So for each button, you'll just select the appropriate screen. And this is the actions you can do here. Open screen with a normal screen change. There are other screen related actions that you see here, but we'll focus on this one. Okay, cancel out of this. And then to make the button change color, you'll go to the button properties under dynamics called background color and put in an expression to look at a, what's called a system variable and to see which number screen is currently active. And this will evaluate as either true or false, meaning a one or a zero. Okay, and then uh, the background color of the button can be changed for that value, zero meaning false or one meaning true. And since the expression is only true or false, the other values would be ignored. I'll cancel that. The sysfar does not exist by default, but all you need to do to get it is right click on the variables and add the sysfar structure definition. The screen numbers also don't exist by default, but you just go on each screen and look at the properties. And under general, you have a screen ID. You can see here I've changed each of the screens uh, ID number manually here to match the name. So please open the mini lab as before and use this as your guide to uh, see a little more detail on how to do this in a smart way here step by step. You can pause the video now and resume to see me run through these steps myself. Okay, welcome back. I'm going to go through the navigation bar mini lab. As long as you have these main screens ready, you can create the navigation bar. You do have to have screens to navigate to first. The strategy will be to complete one navigation button and then duplicate it. And when navigation works, we'll go back and add the expression to handle the color change to indicate the active screen. So the first step here is to create a button on the navigation screen. I'll open the navigation screen. We won't need this text anymore, so I'll hit delete on that. And now under toolbox, basic controls, I'll use push button. And let's make that the right shape here. And there are more fancy and modern looking rectangular buttons, which you could use. The only problem with them is that the, for example, a blue button, this blue is part of the button and changing the background won't change this blue color. It'll change just a, a maybe a small border uh, behind the button itself. So some of these button styles, you would be able to tell which is highlighted, but we're just going to stick with the basic push button for this training. Get rid of these guys here. Let's add the text here for auto. It's a little small. So how about uh, size 16? looks better. The next step is to set this button properties to open a screen. So let me click on this button and change the here command type to execute commands and commands on release when I release the button. So let's double click to open that up a new command and you go to the screen tab. I've got uh, to double click to choose a screen. I want this to be the auto screen. Just double click in here. Okay. And okay. So assuming I did that right, I'll copy and paste this button here and make them as shown here, set up jog zero alarms and recipes, but I'll have to go and change that screen open. So control C to copy, control V to paste. This was set up 
and then change the command on release. You can just click edit, go into the, the screen here and choose setup. Okay. Okay. So I'll just do that again here now for the jog zero, double click here for jog zero. Change the commands on release here to the screen called jog zero. Okay. Okay. I'll just keep going. And here's my button for alarms. Alarms. Change the command on release. Edit the screen to alarms. Okay. Confirm all that. And I have one more. I'm running out of room here. I've got a lower resolution for your ease in viewing. This will be the recipe screen. Recipes. Change that one. I'll edit to recipes. Okay, this should work. Confirm everything. In step five, verify the functionality in the runtime simulator. Let's hit uh, start project. Yes, good time to save. There's the eval mode. Okay. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to look. But when you hit the auto screen, it will resize and look perfect. Auto setup. You just want to check all these. Be sure it's going to the correct screen in case you made a mistake and missed one of them. All right, that seems to work. I will close it. And now on to the second part here to change the color to indicate the active screen. So first thing, we better give a screen ID number to each of the main screens. And that's one reason that we put the prefix here, numerical prefix with the screens, just to keep that in order. So I'm going on auto under the general tab. I'll have a one. Number two is setup here. Number three, jog zero. Number four, the ID is four and recipes is five. Uh, the other reason is that it keeps these screens in order so that uh, they'll alphabetize here because of this numbered prefix. Now it's time to create the sysvar in the real time DB under variables. Here's a real time DB. Here's variables. I've got all my variables in here from before, but I don't have the sysvar until I right click add sysvar structure definition. And now I have this variable called underscore sysvar. And you can see all the different members in the hierarchy of this system variable. There's a lot of them here. The help has a lot of information on what these do. We'll be pointing out just a few of them here in the basic training. So let's see if we can use this sysvar to set a logical condition that adjusts the color of the button. That dynamic color of the button is under the properties of the button called dynamics. Got dynamics background color will enable this background color. And the variable, you could put in a single variable but we're going to put in an expression that evaluates to true or false. So let's uh, click here on expression. You know, be sure you don't have any filter. If you have a filter from before, it, it might not show. Um, then if you go to expression, you're not going to see sysvar if the filter is applied from the previous screen. Just remove the filter, just delete the filter and refresh so that you see sysvar. Then go into expression and choose the sysvar active screen. Double click to choose it. And notice it automatically applies the correct syntax with the square bracket around the, the variable and its element. Okay, so leave that with that syntax and then you can type equals one, meaning number one is the auto screen, screen number one. So this is our little test to see if it's on screen one. And now what color should this uh, background be when this variable or this expression result is true or, or false, meaning zero or one, go to edit background colors. You see the color threshold can be applied to other variables that are expressions that would evaluate to a result other than zero and one, but we're just going to use zero and one. You could just delete the other ones in this case. Uh, if we leave it at default here, it would be a red button when the screen is not selected and a green button when it is but I think I want it to just stay gray and then turn yellow. So I'll edit this red to be gray. I think this gray here, or silver. 
And then this green, edit to be the color yellow. You are free to choose any colors you want. It doesn't matter to me. This is what I will do. Okay, it looks like I did a little bit different. We had you use the filter to find the sysvar. Okay, that's all one and the same here. We did this. We added the colors. And now uh, step five is repeat for the other buttons. And some tips to save time is to uh, copy and paste and edit the expression. And let me show you what I mean by that here. The auto button has this expression. And so you might as well just um, copy this expression with control C and then go to the next button setup and you know check that property and, and paste this in here but delete the one set up with screen number two okay and you could do that with each of them you can do them one by one this is number three that one be sure you enable and paste that's number four and recipes enable and that's number five paste and delete replace the five you noticing I have not done the background color and the reason I didn't do that is because I'll have all the colors the same so I might as well just select all of these control click to select the remaining four that I haven't done yet and that way I can edit the background color for these four that we haven't done yet all at the same time okay so number one we had was okay let's do yellow and zero was supposed to be the color silver okay silver and yellow and it really doesn't make any difference whether you remove or leave these other colors for the other values i'll just leave them in here okay and it says it will apply changes to all the selected objects okay that's what i wanted and now time for the final test let's start it here save the changes okay Clicking on each button, the button lights up. You can click around. The screen is always the correct screen, and the button highlights the color to indicate the screen. Perfect. All right. I'll try to give you some little troubleshooting tips here at the end. If you're having trouble here, uh, be sure that each button does have a unique screen command. Sometimes I've seen people forget to do that. They'll paste the screens and edit only the text of the button and forget about the command behind the button. And be sure that that actually opens the correct screen. Another thing is to be sure each button has a unique expression. When you're pasting this, the variable back color expression here should always show the correct screen number for that button. And it's possible you had uh, forgotten the very first step, which was to assign screen numbers to the main screens here. Let's check that there's the correct ID for each of the screens. And the certification checklist is just that the buttons navigate and the color changes as you saw. Now, on this one here, there's an optional exploration, which I will demonstrate also. And that is to add an indicator for COM driver status. There's a little bit of room here in this... Uh, navigation button you could put a little lamp so why don't we do that here go to lights leds and put a little green light in there i think i'll select it so i can draw it kind of small here center that in here i want this button to reflect whether or not a good data has been transmitted to the controller to and from the hmi good comms that is and so the command state variable should be this sysvar com driver status it's called so look for com driver status but if you just put it in like this it's actually going to be the opposite of what you want this light will turn on when you have a bad communication attempt so instead what you can do here is go into that expression again and one thing that's nice here is that expression will retain the variable you had put com driver status equals zero that would be one way to do it this is a mistake because there's a mistake in this uh, expression. Um, if you remember from before, when you put in this sysvar, it's supposed to have the uh, square bracket around it. So that's really the only problem. Be sure you don't lop off the underscore like I did here. Okay, sysvar com driver status equals zero. And another way to do it would be to just put the not expression in front of it. Not 
SysVarcom driver status. That's what we are asking you to do here. Okay. Now you can try this and you see that it is illuminated, indicating good comms, or I should say it's really a lack of failed communications. If you were to disconnect your Sikimia connection right now, I found this would not turn off. And the reason is that the HMI does not have any button or lamp that's using any of those global variables yet. Any of the HMI variables in the controller, we're not really asking for them, so it can't fail. This will be more useful to us later on uh, when we do have data on the screen. Now for this final part here, which is to use the styled buttons for navigation, it says instead of changing the background color, set the command state variable to the expression, such as sysvar active screen equals one to change the button illumination based on active screen. So let me show you that with just one example. I'll make a, a double, I guess, of the recipes screen here, just temporarily. And I'll take the rectangular button, this blue rectangular button. Okay, and let's just put in uh, recipes here for that one. This might not be the best color text for a dark blue button. How about a red or an orange? That looks better. And then what we would do is keep the command type as execute commands, just like the, the recipes button that we had before, and take that same command on release. So the command on release was new command screen, open a normal screen change to recipes. Okay, okay. And then instead of using the background color, I'm gonna copy this expression, copy and paste it into the command state. And in this case, it's the state of this button. Let me be sure to paste that on the blue recipes button here, paste. So these are the same button, just um, the blue one has this command state variable. We're not doing anything with the background color on this one. So let's check this out. Yes, save. All right, alarms, recipes. Yeah, see how it lit up? These are really just the, the same button. They do the same thing. So you could make all of these buttons with uh, the command state variable and the expression. That actually would be a little simpler way to create this. But nonetheless, this is the way that we've always done it in the training class. And you're welcome to, if you want, replace all the buttons with the other style or keep it in this style here. And this takes us to the end of the navigation bar mini lab. Thank you for watching this video and please go to www.yaskawa.com slash HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI editor.